Today we're going to take a look at the Romantic period of Western literature. Now we take a look at the Western uh, literature world of romance and we have the dates of 1798 to 1832. A couple of fast facts about this Romantic period. Romanticism arises as a response to social and economic changes caused by the Industrial Revolution. Now Wordsworth and Coleridge publish lyrical ballads in 1798. After this point in time, they consider it to be the Romantic era. Keats, Byron, and Shelley also write their greatest poems in the early 19th century. So how does it then spread? Well, in the history of the times, because the French king had been overthrown by a democratic mob, the French Revolution is radical and frightening to the English ruling classes. And the English conservatives worry that revolutionary fear will cross the channel over to England. So until the violence and terror escalate, English liberals support the French Revolution's ideals of liberty, fraternity, and equality. How does that then show up in their literature? Well, in reaction to the ugliness and turmoil of the times, writers turn to nature, they turn to look at the past, and a lot of times they try and escape the current history of the world into a dream world of imagination. Now, the Romantic period begins in 1798 with the publication of Lyrical Ballads with a few other poems, which is a collaboration by two young poets, Samuel Taylor Coleridge and William Wordsworth. So what is with the Lyrical Ballads and a few other poems? Well, included both Coleridge's long narrative, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and Wordsworth's lines composed a few miles above Tintern Abbey. Both poems are now among the most important poems considered in English literature today. They represented a new kind of poetry. It feels spontaneous, emotional. They're self-revealing poems that are written in a simple language about commonplace subjects. With the literature of the times, as we look at the Romantic poets, they were dedicated to political and social change. They also believed in the power of literature as people began to become more literate. They thought imagination, and not reason, was the best response to forces of change. And this created private and spontaneous lyric poetry. So I have some of the pictures of the most famous English romantic poets here for you. You can see William Blake, John Keats, Percy by Shelley, and George Gordon, Lord Byron. Well, during the Romantic era, mostly romantic literature was dominated by poetry. Now, romantics thought poets were extraordinary people. They were necessary to humanity and society in order to explain our literature of the time. Keats called poets physicians. Blake called themselves teachers. And Shelley thought that they were the unacknowledged legislators of the world. However, the novel also is quite well done this time as well. Key novelists during the Romantic era would include Jane Austen, Maria Edgeworth, and Sir Walter Scott. Also at this time, we are going to see the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. And England is the first nation to truly experience the effects of the Industrial Revolution. You start seeing a swelling urban population, which sometimes creates desperate living conditions for the poor. Now, the era's misery and poverty are justified by the government by an economic policy called laissez-faire. So your production is now moving from small mom and pop shops, from homes where people are working where they live, to factories and most often dominated in big cities. Machines work many times faster than human beings, so you needed fewer human beings, but they also needed to know how to work the machines. Communal land is now being taken over by individuals and they're claiming the property as their own. So the landless poor have a tendency to migrate to cities in order to look for work. 
So now we're looking in the influences of romantic poetry. The spread of democratic ideals through the American and French revolutions and the disillusionment after the failure of the French Revolution is certainly going to influence people wanting an escape from the real world into a world of fantasy and imagination. And reactions against harsh living and working conditions created for the urban poor by the Industrial Revolution also have people looking towards nature and looking at poetry and stories in order to try and get away from their lives. Fascination with nature and country life, which seemed a blissful retreat from city slums, are extremely prominent, not only in poetry, but also in the romantic novels at the time. So now when we're looking at what is different between the romantic era and what had happened before, when we look at the Restoration Era, the era that came before the Romantic period, order had just been restored. We do see in England where the American Revolution had happened, and now we're seeing uh, the effects of the French Revolution. France and America are certainly going to have a very dominant influence on what is happening in English literature at the time. Well, in the Restoration Era, order had just been restored. Whereas when we get in the Romantic period, society is now asking for social changes. In the Restoration Era, when you look at poetry, the, po the poets will celebrate order, hierarchy, enlightened rule. They're writing specifically for the upper class. They're writing specifically with meter and rhyme. While in the Romantic period, poets are writing about personal feelings. They're supporting individual rights. They're using more everyday language that just about anybody should be able to read and understand. So where does the word romantic poetry come from? Well, as you can imagine, the word romantic comes from the word romance. Now, in medieval times, a romance is a tale of high adventure. It idolizes knightly virtues. And a lot of times, it even has supernatural elements. Now, romantic writers used elements of romance to go beyond the Restoration Era formality, and they started to explore psychological and mysterious aspects of the human experience. So when we think of the word romance, we're not exactly thinking of the word love. We're thinking of adventurous tales. We're thinking of knightly virtues. We're thinking of the supernatural when we talk about the Romantic Era. Back to the Romantic poets, what were they writing about? Well, they embraced imagination and naturalness instead of reason. They wrote about personal experiences and emotions, often using the simple language, and they saw nature as transformative to human beings. Not that we should go and transform nature like the Industrial Revolution, but nature is going to change us as humans. They're going to focus on the ways nature and the human mind will mirror each other's creative properties. So what is with romantic poetry and the imagination? Well, many say the romantic movement began in 1798 when Wordsworth and Coleridge published the lyrical ballads. Now, the romantics are often also called the nature poets. However, they're really mind poets. So instead of thinking so much about nature, the physical nature, although they did use a lot of it for description, a lot of times we need to look at the romantic poets as human nature poets, the mind poets, who sought to understand the bond between humans and the world of the senses. Now, the Romantics saw the imagination as the link between their human nature and physical nature. To them, imaginative experiences were especially moving, perhaps even superior to human reasoning. Now, the mysterious forces of nature would actually inspire them. All six of the major romantic poets had their own ideas about imagination, but overall, all six would believe that it could be stimulated by physical nature and by the human nature, the, the human mind. Now, if imagination is the romantic's poet guide to truth, then nature is the wise teacher that can then help deliver the lesson. So romantic poets consider themselves especially sensitive towards nature and the human mind. They wanted to help people see the world in all of its beauty, also in all of its tenderness and all of its joys, but they also wanted to help people see the world with its sadness and with its dangers. All of the expectations that you have of nature is gonna be turned on its head and be made new. 
For the romantic poets, nature was a balm to soothe the relentless hounding of an industrialized world. Now, the poets had a strong sense of the nature's transformative properties, and they wanted to uh, pair that against the sense of the Industrial Revolution. Now, poets tried to translate scenes of natural beauty into words so that readers might know the power of the natural forces to shape their own thoughts and feelings about physical nature. And the romantic's interest in natural images and themes was also reflected in a part of romantic uh, poetry, which would be known as Gothic literature. Now, this would come later in the Romantic period, and novels such as Mary Shelley's Frankenstein appealed to the imagination by using more of those supernatural elements, a lot of eerie kind of settings, and questions about the human's ability to manipulate nature. The, the idea of the human mind and how nature should be together, but if you go too far, how the human mind or human nature can be broken. Now, romantic poets obviously will idealize rural settings because they want to get away from the Industrial Revolution. However, some will celebrate the people who lived in the crowded cities. Remember, we're not just talking about physical nature, but human nature as well. So some of your romantic poets are going to promote rights to healthful living conditions, to self-expression, and to relief from political or economic oppression. Some romantics even dreamed that poetry could offer an example of model behavior to improve the horrific social conditions. Uh, they're, calling the they're calling the governments undemocratic. Uh, they're going after the factories, calling them dangerous. They can't believe that there's child labor being used. And they go after the laissez-faire economic policies that left businesses almost completely unregulated. What do we need to remember most about romantic poetry? Well, emotions rule. Their faith in senses and feelings. Because romantic poetry valued individual experience, the rational era from before that was admired was replaced by a trust now in one's emotions. The rational era of the previous time was a complete 180 degree opposite. Emotions are going to rule in romantic poetry. Now, the literature in England prior to this movement was witty, it was intellectual, it was social. You're going to find both of those having the elements in both the Romantic and in the, in the previous uh, Restoration era as well. But Romanticism rejects the social us and embraces the me in things. Now, intuitions, feelings, and emotions ruled. Man's heart was more valued guide than his head. So, another characteristic of Romantic poetry is this enlightenment by emotion. Once again, the supernatural is also going to take a prominent role. Perhaps for the romantics, nature was so powerful that it could not be contained. Nature takes on a mysterious and sometimes even scary quality in the literature of the romantics, and supernatural elements play a large part in their works. Finally, the use of simple language is definitely much more used in the Romantic era than in the Restoration era. The Romantics searched for personal experiences and strove to communicate their power in meaningful ways. Now, to achieve this, the Romantic writers employed simple and direct language. This was another way to reject the neoclassical and res Restoration movements that hoped to emulate ancient writers and lofty styles and language and being intellectual. Now, think of it this way. Our most personal conversations, our most private, do not need elevated language to impress or ring true. So therefore, our simple language is another romantic characteristic. So let's review. Characteristics of romantic poetry include the expressing of emotions and concerns of an individual as well as society. It varies the structure of traditional forms more to suit a poem's purpose. And the focus is on a poet's personal connection to nature, whether it is physical nature or the nature of the human mind. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. If you like what you see, please like, maybe leave a comment, tell me what else you would like to see. I'd love it if you would subscribe. Otherwise, go check out some more of my videos.